When the vital signs indicators first came out about 10 years ago, it was incredibly novel seeing information that used to be difficult to get, like housing prices, teen birth rates, uh, crime statistics, all in one place. This really allowed people to put their neighborhood into context, not only for themselves, but for others inside and outside of Baltimore. Mayor O'Malley had just become mayor and he was just starting city stat. So we had these two data-driven kinds of initiatives going on at the same time. One being about performance of city uh, services and work that the city does, and one around indicators for neighborhood change. We could get measures of what might be regarded as city inputs. Uh, how many police officers are in a particular area of the city? Uh, how many tons of garbage uh, get collected. And then we could relate them to data and vital signs, which are se essentially outcome measures. How well off are these neighborhoods? And so we could see uh, how neighborhoods benefit or fail to benefit uh, from the city services that they're, they're getting, and essentially uh, whether uh, the city is getting a as much bang for the buck as it, as it should. Benia and Vital Signs also facilitated a process where city government and community groups and funders and uh, representatives of local universities really came together to get a shared set of indicators on what was important to the city. I think that was the first time that people had really looked at the indicators across these various sectors. I think the 10th anniversary of Vital Signs is a unique milestone in the fact that we now have 10 years worth of neighborhood level data for Baltimore City, but also in the fact that this allows people to understand what has really happened and transpired in Baltimore over the decade. We've been looking for years for ways to make better decisions. For us, it's always been information opens the door to good decision making. It's when you don't have information that we can always question why did somebody make that decision. Communities were always struggling for ways to make their case to city government, to state government, um, and even sometimes to their fellow community members. Uh, Binya, by having the vital signs, gave a quantitative uh, uh, objective way to actually um, understand and to measure uh, quality of life issues. Binia in the early days went out into the community and trained uh, members at their own association meetings mm -hmm. on here's the data that's available and this is what the data means. We got the City Council to pass a resolution to uh, utilize the vital signs and policy change. Without data, you're simply going after people's thoughts, wishes, assumptions. And if we want change, if we want positive change, data is critical to that effort. I believe that any municipality or any urban area should have one central repository of data to ensure that inconsistencies of information is addressed. Oftentimes, the media would say one thing, one university would say another thing, an agency would say another thing. So it's easy to see these numbers as just statistics, but each one represents a human story. What was interesting and innovative about Binya um, in Baltimore was that it took what one might think of as the dry bones of statistics and breathed life into it. And that's mostly what we discussed in our meetings, uh, how we should organize the findings, how, how we should present them, what should be included, what shouldn't be included. What's really also great is it's not just having the information, it's also having access to people who can help interpret what, it, what does this data tell you. I'm amazed at how many people access the data that the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance has been putting out now for 10 years. The church was looking for a way that they could really give back to their community. Um, and by looking through the Binia, the indicators, uh, the indicators uh, actually during a training session, they were drawn to uh, the elevated lead levels um, as well as
as uh, the asthma rates. And so that gave them an idea that they could do some healthcare interventions, that maybe they could have a health fair. We've used uh, vital signs uh, uh, specifically uh, through some of our granting programs. We've asked our grantees to actually use the uh, the vital signs to indicate neighborhoods that they were working in uh, as they talked about results for the work that they were going to be doing. We asked them to track them against some of the indicators that vital signs actually provided. And having these uh, facts in front of us helps us organize how we communicate with neighborhoods as well as with our own city agencies in ways that focus the conversation and really hone in on how we prioritize efforts. Edinburgh, Baltimore, we use data to track outcomes to determine if we were on the right pathway. A very notable project I believe Beanie has undertaken itself is looking at the effect of foreclosures on children in Baltimore City. I taught a, a course, for example, called uh, Neighborhood Politics, where I sent my students out to particular neighborhoods to work with community groups. But before I did, I gave them a look at vital signs so they could learn a little bit about their neighborhoods before they got there. We are strategically using those indicators and, and others that we will come up with, uh, again, to see the extent of which Morgan State University has been an active change agent in the neighborhoods around us. You have to make them really count. Once, once you spend a dollar in community development, if you're not getting some leverage or some return on that dollar, you're not going to have much effect on what you're trying to do. So you really are looking for ways to extend that, that scarce dollar, um, either through return or through leverage, um, to magnify the impact that you want to have. Benia itself has been very helpful to us in, uh, in providing a wealth of data around the work that we've been doing um, in Baltimore in general, but also specifically regarded to the work that we've been doing in East Baltimore for the past 10 years. Baltimore is lucky to have a resource like Vital Signs that helps us track and monitor the good stories and the ones that we have yet to work on. Communities are what made uh, Binia uh, innovative, and communities uh, and, the, and their needs are, are what's going to keep it, keep it going. I think it's important for Binia to look at equity issues, issues of race and class as it relates to the economic health for this city. Having data and understanding data are really two different functions. So to the extent that Benia, moving forward, understands that it may be less the access to it that, that where the emphasis needs to be because you can, you can Google. You can do all kinds of things and get facts. What that means and then how to use it and then how to, to track over time, that's a, a more refined art, if you will. And that seems to me the role that Benia ought to be playing, that there isn't somebody in there. You know, our computers don't interpret necessarily the facts. They give us the facts. So Mike is really excited to part with Binya to explore the different patterns that can be found in the vital signs data. That's the role of the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance, is to make sure that the data is available now and into the future, and data, data that's actually relevant to communities. So over the past 10 years, Binia has done a great job of looking at um, indicators of well-being in Baltimore City. I think one of the future, uh, if I were to futurescape, uh, one of the things that I would love to see Benia move toward is, is blurring the lines between city and the region and actually exploring um, data and indicators um, between Baltimore City and other counties around the region. It brings information that used to be only held by a small group of people or a small group of agencies it really does make it more of a democracy, that this is available to everyone. I want to first congratulate Binia for 10 phenomenal years serving Baltimore. And I think it's because of that service to Baltimore that we thought it was important for Binia to be here at the University of Baltimore. As an urban institution, as a university that is engaged in our community, it was natural for the Jacob France Center and the University to host Binia. I look forward to continuing to work with the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance for the common goal of a better quality of life in every neighborhood.